Hi everybody, you want to show shifts of aggregate demand. There are three different ways you can draw these shifts. You just do whichever one you're comfortable with. You don't need all three in your exam, you just need one of these three really. But depending on how you've been taught, you'll be used to, I'm sure, one of these three. Or maybe not. So how do you construct these diagrams? Well, these two are going to be the classical interpretations. This one down here will be the Keynesian interpretation. Let's start by looking at the classical interpretation. So I'll label these together. Uh, price level on the y-axis, real GDP on the x-axis. Okay. So it's important that you get that right, otherwise you lose all your marks. Right, on the left here we're going to do the really, 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 really simple one, which is just of AD and SRAS. Initial equilibrium of Y1 and P1, and all you need to do here, guys, is shift AD whichever way you need to do it. So let's say it's an AD shift to the left, and there you go, from AD1 to AD2. Done. Okay, with a lower price level and lower output level as well. Alright, so if that's what you uh, want to do, then you can do that. That's absolutely fine, as long as it's only a shift of AD. This diagram is, is more than adequate. If you wanted to draw something more sophisticated, maybe you wanted to show the impact on the economy as a result of the reduction in AD in the form of a deflationary gap, you might want to, want to, you might want to draw something like this, but more sophisticated. So AD and SRAS. But now you might want to stick an RAS on it, like that, and show the full employment level of output. So initially equilibrium is at Y1 and P1, and let's assume it's a, the same AD shift to the left, you would do it the same way, and show the fall in actual growth and the fall in inflationary pressure at the same time. So that might be quite good for evaluation purposes to show how we're getting further and further away from the full employment level of output um, and to show the deflationary gap, the bigger deflationary gap as a result. So you might want to do something slightly more sophisticated, whether you're shifting AD left or right, you can use that one there. You might want to use the Keynesian version. So what do we need to do there? We'll first label the axis, the price level on the y-axis, real GDP again on the x-axis. Now draw your Keynesian LRAS looking something like that, with full employment there. Let's this time say you want to shift AD to the right, change it up a bit. All you do is plonk on an AD curve from AD, uh, call it AD1. Your initial equilibrium is P1 and Y1, and then just show your shift of AD to the right, to AD2, with a higher growth level and higher demand hold inflation. Right, so you've got three ways of shifting AD, whichever one you're comfortable with. Your basic AD SRAS, your classical, full classical model with AD SRAS and LRAS, and your Keynesian model here with a Keynesian LRAS. So whichever one you want to use and you're comfortable with, use it. Three different ways of shifting aggregate demand there. Have we labelled our axis every time? Yes, we have. Have we labelled all of our curves? Always check that. Yes, we have. Have we labelled our equilibria? Always check that. Yes, we have. You mess any one of those up, guys, you lose all your marks. Horrible thing to do, but we haven't done it yet. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, hopefully you're very comfortable with shifting AD. You're going to have to do that in your exam. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you very much.